everyone and welcome to another video from Colour with Claire. Today we're looking at Creme Dash Luminance Skin Tones. So I have a playlist on my channel which will be linked in the description below and that playlist is specifically for skin tones in different brands of coloured pencil. So I've done Black Widow, Prismacolor, Polychromos, now Luminance. And if you do have any requests for other pencil brands please let me know. I will be adding to it anyway. Um, because I have quite a few different pencil brands to get through but any specific requests do let me know in the comments. So today we're looking at Luminance. Now Luminance have 76 pencils in their full set which is, is quite on the low side really when you consider 150 in Prismacolor and it's been quite difficult for me to whittle down all of these skin tones really so it's a good job we've actually got five um, and yeah, so basically these are the ones that I use most in my colouring, but of course you'll probably be able to make up some more skin tones, you know, with your pencils. So here we go. I'm going to zoom in so that we can get really nice and close and see all of the different blends. So as I explained on my previous videos in this series, I will be showing you the uh, the blends of the skin tone in this box here and you'll be able to apply that to your portraits and your faces in your colouring books. But if you're worrying about, well, where exactly do I put the colours? How do I know how to colour a nose or a mouth? Well, I do have a lot of videos on how to colour faces and skin tone in general. So just go to the search box on my channel, type in skin tones or how to colour a face and you'll find them there. Okay, so let's begin. The first one that I've chosen is quite a light pinkish colour palette. So we're starting off with the Anthraquinoid Pink which is number 571. Now this is a really, really bright pink, so don't be worried because we are going to tone it down a little bit. And the paper that I'm using is a very rough tooth sketchbook paper. And with these being so soft, these pencils, you will notice quite a lot of tooth on the paper. And I'm not gonna go to the trouble and the length of completely burnishing it as I would to make a face look very smooth. This is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm really sort of being very, very light when I bring the pink out here because it has to try and blend with the primrose, which is much lighter in tone. So once you've put your pink down, we're looking at primrose number 242. We're going to go over the pink and that should, you know, just going over half of the pink that you put down will start to naturally tone it down and blend it out anyway but we are going to need the help of our next colour which is a buff titanium so I'm just going to bring this out a little bit more because we have actually only got three colours to do on this the violet grey is an optional extra to tone down the pink further if needed you'll see what I mean in a second so you can see a definite line there between the anthraquinoid pink and the primrose but we're going to work on that in a sec. It's probably, out of all of them, the, I don't want to say the hardest blend, but it's just quite, it's not, it's so far apart from each other that they don't tend to blend quite as naturally as other colours. So then we get our Buff Titanium 801, and this is what I like to call the Luminance uh, Secret Key. Secret Key? What? <laughs> there was me setting it up to sound all good. This is what I like to call uh, Secret Weapon. That's what I meant to say, because it's like an off-white and it's absolutely fantastic as a blender and, you know, to use as highlights on skin. It's really, really soft looking tone, softer than stark white, but it doesn't really have any cream to it. It's very difficult to describe, actually. So I'm filling in the rest of the box with the buff titanium and I'm also going to come over and go all the way over the anthraquinoid pink and as you can see already that's really desaturated the tone of that pink so if you're worried about your portrait just looking really ruddy and rosy cheeked you don't have to worry we've desaturated it down a little bit also using a hard pressure with the buff titanium will get the uh, the primrose and the pink to blend a little bit more. 
So that's the basics of this tone. Now I'm not really sure if you can see the, the, the nuances of this on the camera, but you can definitely see that there are three different colours to play with here. Uh, the primrose and the buff are probably looking exactly the same as each other on your screen. But really, you do need that primrose just to um, act as the transition colour. And uh, yeah, so that's, the, that's the, uh, the basic skin tone there. Now, if you wanted to, as an optional extra, you could take the violet grey number 093 and very lightly go over your pink to further dull it down a little bit and really make it more of a shadow colour. Because at, at the moment, it could be seen as a, a sort of rouge colour uh, or a blush colour. And if you wanted to just dull it down even more, make it into that kind of shadowy look, I would just very, very lightly, the softest pressure, go over it with the violet grey. And again, you might not be able to see the difference that that makes to it on camera, but to the eye, it's very subtle, but it has completely desaturated that pink. If you look at the two together now, hang on, have you got wax? Oh yeah, because I've, <laughs> this is so annoying. My overhead light always produces, like it always knocks straight on where I'm colouring. So you can just see wax now, can't you? I bet you've not been able to see that entire thing. Um, so if I just tilt it, hopefully you'll be able to see better now how different uh, the pink is to how it was originally. And yeah, so I'm going to try and colour down here now for the next one. I'm not going to move it up because I don't want to keep getting that glare. So anyway, moving on. Next up, we've got uh, my favourite out of all of them. This is the one that I use most of all. And it begins with Burnt Sienna. That's number 069. So you've got five different colours to get in this uh, palette. So in this space, I'll just have to gauge where to put each new colour so we don't run out of space. So it does start off quite dark, but don't forget, this is still a light skin tone. These are just the, the shadows and the darker areas of the face that you would use sparingly. So even though it looks like, you know, that's quite a, a dark tone because you've got such a dark brown there, they are just for your shadows, really. So your, your face will mostly be in this kind of section. Next up is the Burnt Sienna 50%. No surprises there really, it's quite good with them um, luminance because they have they have a tone like Burnt Sienna and then they have a 50% and a 10%. So it's, it's almost just telling you exactly what pencils go together which is great. Uh, and then your Burnt, uh, burnt Sienna 10% which is 862. Okay. I'll get that to blend a bit nicer in a minute. We then have the Burnt Ochre 10%. Just making sure I've got the right one. No, that's Brown Ochre. Ah, oh, I've just put the Burnt Ochre 10% down. Where is my Burnt Sienna 10%? Oh, it's here. Ah, oh, put the wrong one down. Tell you what. This is why, you know, <laughs> this is why my videos are always live. Well, they're not even live. I could edit this out, but I just can't be bothered. Um, let me get an eraser. I wondered why that looked a little bit different. Get an eraser. And let's try it again. So, rewind. Right, okay. So now we're going to put our 10% Burnt Sienna down, number 862. Oh, that's better. And then we can move in with our brown, not brown, burnt ochre 10%. I'm not doing very well on this one, am I? <laughs> burnt ochre 10%, number 872, which as you can see, much better blend. And then finally, the secret weapon, the buff titanium. I'm just going to pop that in at the end for now. But I just want to go back to where we erased it because obviously it's left us a bit of a line there. So I'm going to go back to that Burnt Sienna 50%. I'm just going to re-add that in. 
so we can get a bit more of a smoother blend. And then the burnt sienna 10%. That's better. Back in with the burnt ochre 10%. This is how it should have looked if I'd have got the colours the right way around originally. <laughs> Now, because we've come this far and ended up putting more than one layer on it, I might as well just burnish it out now. So, buff titanium. There we are. I'm just going to go back in quickly with the, uh, the burnt sienna just to fill in the two so it looks smooth. So, yes, this is the one that I use most often out of my luminance sets so if I'm going to colour a portrait with these pencils this is usually the one that you would see me do so as you can see as I mentioned before it really is a light skin tone because this is going to make up the majority of your face these darker colours are your shadows and they won't be as thick as this you won't be using as much as this Okay, so there we are. That's the uh, that blend there. Now next up we have a we're getting into a more golden skin tone now. So I'll move it up a little bit, but not all the way. Uh, this is brown ochre starting with so zero three seven. Making sure I've got the right pencil this time, and this is a four color blend. So brown ochre, lovely golden tone to this pencil. Then brown ochre fifty percent. So we're going down again in the uh, in the percent increments. Uh, brown ochre fifty percent. Yep. I put them all in order before the video began, and then for some reason one of them decided to move places. <laughs> okay, so we've got our brown ochre fifty percent. Then brown ochre ten percent. You can see that these are meant to be put together. You can see how nicely they go together. I've got a little brush here. I always forget to use it and end up blowing. <laughs> okay. And then finally, Naples Ochre 821. So this is a lovely sun-kissed rich golden skin tone this one so whether you're doing someone someone that's olive skinned or someone that's just got back off holiday or just has a beautiful spray tan done <laughs> this is the, the one that I would use for that And back in with a little bit of that brown ochre. I said I wasn't going to completely burnish it and make it perfectly uh, smooth but it's almost irresistible to just leave tooth on the page. <laughs> so you just have to bear with me a sec. There we go, that'll do. So another beautiful skin tone and next up we have sepia 50% so let's make sure that's what we've got yes number 906 so another four color blend and we're moving into darker shadows now but still keeping the golden touch to the skin tone Yeah, I've gone with the sepia 50% instead of the sepia itself which is fully saturated because I think this one is just that bit um, softer than the 
full sepia. It's very dark. And it seems to just act better as a shadow. Then we jump straight into brown ochre, 037. I've got to go back now because we've already used that. So making sure I've got the right one. Brown ochre, there we go. And we're going straight over the top of the sepia because we want to make this as good a blend as possible with it being quite a difference between the two tones. But it does work. You just need to, sometimes you just need to work with them a bit more. And other times your blends will just be instantly effortless. And then we've got raw sienna, which is number 036. And finally, it's the brown ochre 10%, which we've already used. So, yep, this one, number 832. So as you can see, if you compare it to the previous one that we just did, that one was more of a very light glow, a light tan. This is a lot deeper, uh, more olivey, because even the lightest pencil that we've used is still quite a, a dark beige colour. So just going over again, because I'm doing what I said I wouldn't do. <laughs> As I said, this paper that I'm using is really, really toothy, so that doesn't help. Um, brown ochre. I think I have to burnish it, don't I really, so that you can see the the skin smooth look that it would have. Uh, then it was the raw sienna. And then the brown oak 10%. Here we are, that's better. Okay, so finally, we've got a really dark skin tone. This starts with that sepia that I said was a bit too dark to begin this one with. So sepia is number 407. Again, it's just four colors. That's gonna annoy me. <laughs> Always go out of the box. Yeah, you can still see it. Oh, well. Um, so, yes, sepia. 407 to begin with. And this is going to go into Castle Earth, which is number 046. Now, I don't know about you. You'll have to let me know in the comments. But does your Castle Earth pencil just act really weirdly on the page? It just feels like it doesn't want to go down well at all. I don't know what it is, whether it's just got more of a blend of wax in it or something, but it just feels very odd and it looks kind of weird. Um, it looks a bit speckly. You'll see in a minute what I mean. So I'm putting my sepia down. Might as well just burnish this in one go now. So yes, yeah, Castle Earth. 046. Let's have a go and hopefully you'll be able to see what I mean. I mean, to me, even the sound is different straight away. It creates a lot more dust than any other pencil for some reason. And it just 
I don't know it just has this speckly look to it when it, even when it, you know when it's fully burnished it, it just looks very odd I'd be really interested to know if any of you have the same issue with this pencil um, or if mine's defective I imagine you probably will have the same issue because it's something to do with the mix of pigments that they use inside the pencil see how much dust has come off that pencil um, and then we have raw umber which I just have to find because oh no here we go raw umber 548 That blends really nicely and then finally you've got the olive brown 50% which would be your highlight colors so for things like the apples of your cheeks your cheekbone um, the middle of your chin anywhere that generally protrudes outward on a face would be your highlight areas so you know take a look at your own bone structure and see the things that's that are sticking out more and that'll be where your highlights go and the things that are more sort of uh, narrower and away from it <laughs> would be your shadows that's a ridiculous explanation uh, olive brown 50 percent number 736 So I'm going to bring this up to camera in a second so that you can see what I mean about that castle earth because it just looks really odd. I wonder if I could have gone straight from the sepia to the raw umbra. I never tested that and just miss out the castle earth altogether because that might end up sort of ruining the face a bit. I don't know. Unless we can bring the sepia in. Where are we? Sort of over top. A little bit I don't know anyway when you do your face you might want to leave that color out and see if those two will just go in together but let me bring it up to camera as I promised I would and let me get you zoomed so hopefully you can see just that section here where the castle earth has gone down it really is just not great whatsoever is it it's very odd looking if you look at the the smooth gradient of that and then you look at that it's just not right um yeah so <laughs> we got there in the end we have now got our five different Carandash luminance skin tones this is just ones that i've chosen out of the palette uh, out of the pack you don't have to use them you don't have to uh, stick to them there could be way more that you could make but as i've said this is part of a series i've been making skin tones for a few different coloured pencil brands so do go to the link in the description which will be the link to the playlist of all of those videos put together thank you so much for watching and getting through this one with me and uh, i will see you soon on colour with claire <laughs>